Hi, I'm Ray, and we're going to be looking at pipetting. But first off, we need to look at the health and safety aspects. You should already be wearing your safety coat and goggles. And secondly, looking at the COSH form, we will identify any hazardous chemicals or liquids that we're going to use. Now today, we're not going to be using any hazardous liquids, so we don't need to wear any safety gloves. But should you come across anything hazardous as a liquid, you must put on your nitrile gloves. So there are two types of basic pipettes. The first one is a graduated pipette. It's a, a series of scales on the side in which you can measure a preset uh, volume. Now, this isn't so accurate as the other, which is a volumetric, which you mainly use for analytical work. If we want a more accurate way of dispensing liquids, we need to use the volumetric pipette. Right. So once we've selected the type of pipette, what we need to do is select the pipette filler. There are two main types, one that goes back maybe many decades, it's the traditional rubber pipette. The other is a slightly more enigmatic uh, pie pump, as they call it. If we just look at the rubber, pip, uh, the rubber filler to start with, we have various different aspects of it. What you must ensure is that when you're connecting one to the other is how to hold the pipette safely. Most people will do it very unsafely by holding the far end and then just trying to attach it thusly. The main problem here is that the pipette is likely to snap and then enter your hand and cause a lot of damage and a lot of pain and probably the blood will contaminate your solution. So the safest way to hold it is possibly in a vertical manner so that you don't stab anybody around you. Taking the pipette filler, just guide it onto the end and push down gently. Once you've ensured a good connection, your pipette filler is ready for filling. With the pipette filler attached, we have three buttons. We've got A at the top, S and E. To start with, we need to evacuate the main bulb. We can do this by squeezing together the A button and then depressing the bulb. That forces the air out of the A channel. In order to get the liquid to come up the pipette, we then submerse the pipette into the liquid and press the S. By suppressing the S, the liquid is then drawn into the pipette. In order to dispense the liquid from the pipette, we press the E button. Just squeezing it together would allow the liquid to run back down. Okay, in order to clean the pipette, what we've got to do is just draw in about a third of the pipette volume uh, with deionized water. In order to do so, we have to press the A button on the pipette filler dispel the air inside the bulb, and then draw up a quantity of liquid. As you take in about a third, we can then shift this into the waste part. What you should do is to take the end off the pipette filler as carefully as possible, and put your finger over the end, and then you can control the amount of liquid that's actually being dispelled. What you try to do is hold it at an angle and rotate the pipette itself. This will ensure that the bulb is also cleaned from its liquid. And we just allow that to run out. We can do this a couple of times in order to ensure that the pet itself is clean. Now, once we have a clean pipette, you will notice that in the bottom of the pipette there is a small quantity of liquid. Uh, this is already factored into the calibration of the volume, so we don't need to dispel this liquid. But if you must, when it's only cleaning, uh, you can actually just blow it through using the pipette filler. So all you've got to do is make sure there's air in the top, hold down the S button, and then just squeeze the bulb. This will just force uh, all the air through and the remaining liquid. So now we have a clean pipette. What we need to do is to bring in our desired solution. What we should be doing is instead of going straight to the, the flask itself, we dispense a small quantity of this liquid, like so. And this will just ensure that you do not uh, suffer any contamination uh, to your sample for other users. And in the same in the same manner, all we've got to do with the pipette filler, we just press the A button, squeeze the bulb, dispense in the air. Then using the S button, we can draw up the liquid.
Now, we don't need to draw up a huge amount of volume of liquid. What we're trying to do is just to ensure that this particular pipette uh, now has the same concentration throughout, because we may have a residual amount of liquid left over from the cleaning stage. So in the same manner, what we do is take the pipette filler off and then just control the ejection of the liquid. Having cleaned the pipette, what we need to do is just dispense a quantity of the stock solution that we require. Again, this just avoids contamination of the stock for other users. Taking the pipette, what we've got to do is just fill it up, taking the liquid beyond the graduated line by about two or three centimeters. What we can then do is just dispel the liquid coming down. But first, let us wipe the pipette to ensure there's no residue on the sides of the glass so we can get an accurate volume. Now what we've got to do is just to ensure that we can see the graduated line and the meniscus of the liquid as it falls down to that line. If we're looking at it above or below, we'll get a parallax angle and that will affect the volume of the liquid. So now we're down on the same level. We're going to keep the bottom of the pet inside the flask to ensure that the liquid doesn't spray around and affect everybody. And then we just allow the liquid to fall very slowly, drop by drop, until the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus, is at the top of the line. Once we have that at the graduated line, we can then dispel the volume of liquid into our desired vessel. So when dispensing the liquid, just ensure that the pipette is at 30 degrees to the flask wall. The pipette end must touch the glass wall, and then we can just dispense the liquid. And with one final tap, 25 mil has been accurately transferred.